student in computer science here in Exactas. Um, I'm going to show you my latest work on my bachelor thesis, which is a, a framework to build and train neural networks on Smalltalk. But first of all, um, how is your knowledge on the matter? Do you have some? OK. OK. So well, for the experts, um, I'm sorry, here you're not going to find something new. Uh, actually, you might find this kind of um, boring and maybe unnecessary, um, given the amount of tools out there to, to do what this is going to do and much more. But um, for those who doesn't have experience, sorry uh, again, because I'm no expert at all, but uh, this work might find it, uh, might, you might see it like uh, the result of my self-teach process on learning, machine learning. So I hope you it brings some, some light on the subject to you too. <coughs> so, okay, mm, some concepts. Artificial, in, artificial intelligence is uh, any technique that mimics the human intelligence in, in computers. And machine learning are, are complex statistical techniques that trains uh, or, or that improves machinery at tasks with experience. <clears throat> and there are three uh, big groups. Uh, we can classify these um, algorithms, which, here, which are reinforcement learning, supervised learning, and unsupervised learning. Um, these are some of the, the problems they aim to solve. <coughs> supervised learning aims uh, to image classification, customer retention, diagnostics, um, and supervised learning you can see as customer segmentation or targeted marketing. In reinforcement learning you find uh, robot navigation, game AI, real-time decisions. But this framework is focused on this big group. And so OK, supervised learning algorithms try to discover the, a pattern um, between known features and outcomes, and tries to derive a function to predict the output value of a set of unlabeled inputs. OK? So it requires, basically, of well-labeled training data okay, to train a, well, a computer and try, and try to predict something about them. So, for example, the simplest case might be, I don't know, hours studied and the GPA. So we have, we have this, this data set well known. We'll assume it has a linear relation. I'm just gonna give a, a, a very glimpse of, of the problem and what we're going to, we are trying to solve. And afterwards, we're gonna see the framework just to, to, to clarify some concepts. So we're going to assume this, there is a linear, a linear relation between the feature and the target. And we need to find a W, a constant, a number uh, that if we multiply x by this W, we'll get an estimation which should be approximately to the real target. <clears throat> so in the end, we'll, we'll, we'll need to find a, we will need to define a, a model. Uh, a model or hypothesis, or a predictor, which is this function that estimates the x, I mean the, the y, based on the, on the input. And we'll have also define a loss function, which is the error between this estimation and uh, the real value. Uh, this is the simplest case, OK? Um, maybe in a, in a more complex case, we'll find a bunch of features. For example, in this case, we have tumor characteristic and patient's comorbidities, and we have the best theoretical option. Okay, so this is uh, labeled by experts, and then we have to train a machine to find uh, a pattern there, and then we will have to um, input the, the real value we want to break. 
again, in the end, we will just find a W. But in fact, there is some complex. There is some cases without. I mean, we will add also this constant, which is a name bias, uh, that will uh, improve our estimation. And we also need to add uh, a function to apply to this output. So some some cases we want to. Uh, make this value between 0 and 1 or just to be a positive number or uh, I don't know a, a discrete set of numbers so the function we will help us to uh, make this um, to better improve this this output and this this is function is called the activation function <clears throat> when we have this format of of model this is what is called a simple perceptron. It's the simplest case of a neural network. Okay? It has the, the weight, W, we call it the weight, the bias, and, a, and an activation function. But this kind of model just works well with a linear relation data set, and it's not very good at estimating other types of data sets. So what we're going to do in this case is we're going to grab this output and pass it through another simple layer, simple output, and we're going to have this kind of multi-layer perceptron. And we'll have now an input layer, a hidden layer, and the output layer, which yields the, the estimation. But in the end, it's just a function and an error loss that we're going to need to define. So we will try to model this, these objects. I, I've been trying to, to, to learn via uh, existing tools out there, and I didn't like so much the modeling of these um, objects. But anyway, this is the workflow to develop a supervised learning machine. It has the extraction stage which is uh, gathering the raw data, cleaning, extract, label, whatever it needs to, to, to prepare, to pr process the, the data set. We're going to split it in three subsets. Each, each one has different um, uses during the training. I'm not going gonna, gonna to gonna dip so much more into this, but we're going to need to separate this, and we're going to use it to, to find the value W that we needed to make the best estimation possible. This is an iterative process. Um, and we're going to talk about this later. And finally, once you have this model with the hyperparameters um, uh, tuned, we're going to use it to finally predict new instances that, are, that aren't labeled. <coughs> so yes, the train is essentially a process to update the hyperparameters, or the weights and minimize the loss function. This is the, the process. And the, optimizations, the optimization algorithms we're going to use are gradient-based. That means that this delta is directly related to this derivative um, of the loss with respect to the weight, each of the weights. So you can imagine now that computing all this, like computing the, computing the, um, all this input, and then computing the, computing the derivatives and then applying to each of the weights to update them requires a lot of computation and is kind of heavy. And a very important, it's very important to have different initialization methods for the weights. I mean, we, we need to find W, but this needs to uh, initi start with a value. And we need to have different options to, to do that. So these are the state of the art. Uh, by 2017, I found this graph and I like it, but uh, I don't think it changed so much since then. Um, Facebook has its own tools. Google, Amazon, and Microsoft has its tools. And this is um, compare, uh, a chart comparing um, characteristics between the frameworks. Uh, for example, if they have a convolutional network support or recurrent neural, there are networks to, that works very good at predicting things in images or in audios. Um, well, speed, easy to use, tutorial, if they support multiple GPUs. We're going to use TensorFlow. 
this um, TensorFlow is very good because it's open source, has a C library to reuse. We don't want to, to uh, reinvent the wheel. We're not going to uh, compute derivatives in Smalltalk. We're going to delegate that to TensorFlow. Uh, it has bindings for Quiz, Faro, and VA available. This is a key, uh, very important. Thanks to Gerard Richarte, Serge Stingwick, and Mariano Peck for doing this. Uh, they they uh, wrote the bindings for each of the dialects. <coughs> and Keras, for example, use TensorFlow. <coughs> and it's a deep learning API written in Python. Uh, it helps you build neural networks and, and train them. So we're going to build something very similar to Keras in the end. So this is the framework. This is some of the modules, uh, configuration maps, packages, you call it. But we have the neural network module, the, the ROPs, reifications. These are um, first order objects that helps you build and uh, call functions to, to the TensorFlow library because they're, they're not very, it's not very well documented and I tried to uh, reify some objects that helps you make the calls. Uh, and finally, the binding, the, the lowest um, part of the framework is kind of uh, coupled to each dialect, but I try to uh, make it the more portable possible so all this doesn't change and you can reuse it. Um, so, okay, let's get to some uh, coding example. Um, we're going to first define the predictor. Uh, this is the code you write in Keras and here is what you're going to write in, in Smalltalk. You have a sequential model builder. I try to maintain the sequential model because it kind of seems like mm, uh, the, uh, the state of the art name. I don't know. I, didn't li I don't like so much, but anyway. It's a sequential model where you add uh, layers. You have the output layer, uh, I mean the output size, the, s the input size, the activation function. You can uh, configure the layer as you wish here. Um, and you, you, have, you apply a function to the, to the last output. This will return you the model. Uh, you prepare the trainer. In Keras, you call the method compile to the model. Uh, I thought that it was useful to think of the trainer and what you can configure to the trainer. Uh, you minimize a loss function using an optimization algorithm. This is the learning rate and you, the, the same parameter you find here. And you track metrics of the trainings. I mean, uh, you want to see how it evolves your, your training, if it's, if, it's, uh, if it's converging to a proper solution or it's just diverging and you're not, never going to find a W that suits you well. Then you read the data. You have a data set provider that downloads data set from the internet and you apply transformations to it with this object. This object has the responsibility to, uh, to, to uh, access the different subsets. <coughs> and you finally execute the training. Uh, in Keras, you apply, you call the function fit uh, with different parameters. Here you call the trainer and you say when to stop, you pass the number, the uh, con stop condition. And you finally say, okay, train model to fit a sample. This will return you the summary of the training. <coughs> Here are some numbers. Um, just to understand a bit, uh, the loss is the error, so should be uh, going down uh, across the, the, the training. And the accuracy is uh, it's a number that says of the of the training data set or the validation data set how much of that it really it it, it really predicted okay if it, it was what if it was one and it predicted one okay and if it was zero and it predicted one so uh, the accuracy uh, tells you this how how well does your train um, the, your your model um, predicts so you can see that uh, as faro and va and python are very similar, okay? In quality of the result and the numbers, there's no difference at all. And this is the value for the training and this is for the validation stage. There are different subsets, they run in different moments of the training, but 
also they are very similar again. <clears throat> okay, this separation is very useful because these objects, they are not only for neural networks, I mean you can reuse it for something else, they are just uh, objects that help you with maths and TensorFlow uh, is supported for uh, distributed computing, so you can reuse it and do whatever you want. I mean, neural network is just a, a packages that you load on top of this, but you can use this. <coughs> um, finally, a little more about the binding. Um, so yeah, they call to the C library, and each dialect has its own way of calling the library. So I try to minimize the, the differences between them. They are just uh, packages that load for that dialect. In f in for example, in VA, you call the library using platform function. In Faro, you use the UFFI. And in Quiz, you have the squeak foreign uh, function interface. So they are pretty different. But you just install a platform library. Uh, you set this to the TensorFlow C API. And in the end, every object in the, in, the, in the framework just calls the TensorFlow C API. And you uh, parameterize this like this. In every dialect, if you have a new dialect, you just define a new uh, bus, uh, platform library. So yes, yeah, summarizing some of the objects you may find in the, in the frameworks are variable tensors, initializers, activation functions, uh, the dense layer, some of the last functions you may find, uh, optimization algorithms, and the stop conditions. I try to uh, uh, add most of them, but there's a lot of more to, to come. Um, this is some of the rules I use to, to model this, this framework. I try to um, keep up with this heuristic for good design. I mean, working with immutable objects, completed and valid, and avoid, trying, avoid the unnecessary setters and getters and ifs. This uh, try to guarantee the encapsulation of, of uh, the knowledge. And of course, I try to work with the TDD also. This is the, the coverage I had in the build on Faro. Uh, in Faro GitHub, you might find this. Uh, it's computed every time I, I just push a commit. I just try to, <laughs> just try to improve this. Um, so yeah, for the, for the upcoming work, I just need to fix some leaks there with the C library. It's not very um, happy with that, but I'm gonna try to add more layers like convolutional. Uh, I said it works better for predicting some things in, in images. Regularizers, there's also on the roadmap, and I'll try to optimize manipulating data sets because it's kind of heavy uh, in, the, in the VMs. In each dialect, it's kind of heavy. But that's all for for now, here you will find the frameworks. They are still a uh, work in progress. So, so you, can, you can download it, you can try it. I can't guarantee it will, won't broke, it won't break. Um, but that, you have any questions? To, to what kind of data sets you applied these frameworks and, and what kind of results have you got? How was your experience using this? Yeah, uh, I tried to use the MNI ST. Yeah, he's asking uh, which data sets I used to train this, which uh, that's right, right? Or what's my experience with? Yeah, uh, I tried to use the, um, what, how, what, what, I, what I found trying this and I tried to use the, the data sets, they, they're your internet. Um, they're like uh, the standard, maybe MN, MN IST. It's like a big data set of uh, handwritten digits. Uh, and it's kind of uh, the ones they use in the competitions, for example, like they're very common there and you just need to work on that. And you have metrics uh, out there to compare with the standard if you are working good or, or, or bad. So that. How did it go? Well, you, you've seen it. I mean, 
the, the, the key is to, to find the, the right model, and that is the work of data scientists, uh, like defining the function. Like, I, I don't know how to, to define a well model, I just try to do the tool. And comparing the ones that are written in, in Python and the ones written in Smalltalk, there is no difference at all. Okay, thank you. Thank you.